Now to a News 4 I team investigation, a deadly risk facing drivers right in front of them, but often undetected. That's right. We're talking about blind zones, not the ones on the sides or behind your vehicle, but straight ahead. I looked everywhere at first screaming and then I saw him and I ripped him out from under the car. Tonight, a Virginia mother shares her unimaginable story with the News 4 I team to warn others about what she did not see and how that day forever changed her family. Consumer investigative reporter Susan Hogan with a story we hope you'll think about the next time you get behind the wheel. So tell me a little bit about where we are right here. Talk to me a little bit about your gardens. So this is uh, Hudson's Memorial Garden. We transformed it. When you're walking around in Hudson's Garden, what are you thinking, reflecting on? It's a time for my mind to be quiet. It's peaceful for me, that's why I did it. For Jackie Foshi, the memories in this spot of her son Hudson are both beautiful and painful. He loves picking flowers for me. Hudson, do another one. There you go. He loved, like, no one I knew. He made me laugh. Are you crazy? <laughs> she called him an old soul. He lived large. <laughs> he wasn't scared. <laughs> I miss that personality. <laughs> Thank you. But on January 8th, 2019, a tragic accident in this very spot changed the journey for this family. He opened the gate and I drove very slowly, like all the way up. And then um, he wasn't there. He thought he was getting the mail and you know your worst nightmare. He was under the car. Hudson run over by the family SUV, his mom behind the wheel in disbelief. I looked everywhere at first, screaming, and then I saw him and I ripped him out from under the car. And I was hoping he was joking, but he wasn't. I never saw him. The four-year-old died from his injuries. <laughs> Joining a growing list of children hurt or killed in this country because the driver didn't see them. You never feel like a good parent again. You never, you're never whole. Jackie said her family bought the large SUV thinking it would be safer, but found she did have trouble sometimes seeing around it. I can't tell you how many times I had hit his bike. Like, I mean, those, they're so tall and so big and you just can't see it. I mean, you're so high up in the air. That's because as vehicles have gotten larger in this country, so have the blind zones, says Michael Brooks with the Center for Auto Safety. The fact is Americans are buying gigantic cars and that's part of the issue. Brooks says these larger blind zones have led to an increase in child fatalities and injuries. These vehicles aren't getting smaller. Their grills are getting higher. And I've heard from a lot of short drivers that are having trouble even seeing over some of these larger hoods. According to the latest data from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, in 2015, there were 366 deaths and 15,000 injuries due to forward moving vehicles, also known as front overs, all of them occurring on private property like driveways. There's a large zone in front of the vehicle where you can't see something that's the height of a child, even the height of two or three children lined up. And the News 4i team is about to show you how that blind zone might be bigger than you think. Surprising this group of Virginia parents who agree to let their children demonstrate the potential risk of one SUV. Are we rolling? With mom Christy Whedon behind the wheel, one by one. Do you see anything right now? Nope, I don't see anything. We lined them up. I don't see anything, no. One, two. How about now, Christy? No. Three, four, five. Is this your daughter? Mm-hmm, that's mine. Six, seven, eight. This is our ninth child. Nine? We're up to nine kids. Oh my goodness. Our final little boy. Do you wow. see him? I don't see him at all. 
It wasn't until we ran out of kids and moved the first little boy to the 10th spot that she spotted anything. Just barely, yep. I see from his eyes up, that's it. The blind zone, a startling 16 feet. That reality for these moms and dads, a sickening feeling. Wow, that's a lot of kids and they're not squished up either. Does this change your perspective when you get into your car again? Yes, it absolutely does. I mean, it really shows the need for cameras on the front of cars or sensors at the very least. By 2018, all American made cars were required to have backup cameras just like this one. But there's no law that requires vehicles to have front cameras like this. And according to Brooks, few manufacturers include front cameras or 360 degree cameras as standard equipment. Most are only found in luxury vehicles. I think the part that frustrates me most is seeing safety technology sold as a luxury when everyone should have it. I have multiple cameras. After Hudson's death, Jackie traded in her SUV for a smaller one and paid extra to have a front camera installed. Technology she thinks could have saved his life. The technology that's out there and that I have in my new vehicles, he would still be here. He would. In the three years since he's been gone, I miss everything. I couldn't even pick out one thing. Most of the original driveway is covered. Grass and flowers now blooming where the family lost so much. We believe and I hope Hudson's life can help save other people. I know he would have liked that. Hudson's family created a scholarship in his name at the preschool he loved so much. They also helped to build a playground. Now, experts say even if your vehicle has a 360 degree camera, you should still do what I'm doing. Walk around the entire car before getting in and driving it. Many of you have shared our stories since it first aired about the dangers of front blind zones. Now, our story has caught the eye of a U.S. senator who says something needs to be done. Wow, that's a lot of kids and they're not squished up either. Does this change your perspective when you get into your car again? Yes, it absolutely does. Christy Whedon and these parents were shocked at what our News 4 I team demonstration found, just how large some blind zones can be on SUVs or trucks. This is our ninth child. Nine? We're up to nine kids. Oh my goodness. Our final little boy. Do you wow. see him? I don't see him at all. One by one, we sat children in front of the secured vehicle until this mom could finally spot them in front of her. Just barely, yep. I see from his eyes up, that's it. It took 10 children. The blind zone, an alarming 16 feet. That was 16 feet. How many of you were shocked about this? All of you. That number of kids at that distance from the car could be at such real risk was just mind blowing. Senator Richard Blumenthal from Connecticut, who sits on the Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation, watched the story too. That segment was really scary. It was really frightening to see those kids lined up for that length in front of the car. Any car manufacturer seeing that kind of demonstration ought to be appalled and scared because it could be their kids in front of the car, it could be anyone. Hudson, do another one. There you go. He loved, like, no one I knew. But it's not just a hypothetical for Jackie Foshi and her family. She was behind the wheel when it happened back in 2019. I looked everywhere at first, screaming. And then I saw him and I ripped him out from under the car and I was hoping he was joking, but he wasn't. I never saw him. Her four year old son Hudson died after being run over by the family SUV in their driveway. The technology that's out there and that I have in my new vehicles, he would still be here. He would. The latest data from the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration on these types of accidents shows that in 2015, there were 366 deaths and 15,000 injuries due to forward moving vehicles, also called front overs. Senator Blumenthal says we need more updated data. These deaths are needless, tragic and avoidable. 
That's why he just sent this letter to Nitsa after our story, demanding details on how often frontovers are happening each year, calling the agency's data on the topic lacking. And he wants to know what steps Nitsa has taken to prevent them. And if none, why not? The reason why this issue is such a priority is it's so easily solvable. We did it for cars going backward. Why not going forward? Absolutely outrageous that in this day and age with all the stuff in cars, all the technology, all the computers, kids are still at risk if they're in front of a vehicle. That's absolutely intolerable. Now, Senator Blumenthal said some of the options could include mandating sensors or front cameras, just like back cameras that were required in all vehicles by 2018. Well, Senator Richard Blumenthal calls NHTSA response a welcome first step. He's referring to the dangers of what's called front overs. In July, a News 4i team demonstration found just how large some blind zones can be on SUVs or trucks, in some cases up to 16 feet, and have led to numerous deaths and injuries, mostly among children. Blumenthal, who sits on the Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation, urged NHTSA to move quickly on finding remedies to these tragic accidents. Today, NHTSA, citing our investigation, said it will initiate a review of the size and scope of frontover crashes, beginning with collecting more data. To that end, NHTSA is also considering the addition of two new non-traffic crash data elements related to backovers and frontovers for every NTS non-traffic crash in the upcoming data collection year. But the agency has just released new numbers from a five-year span of non-traffic-related incidents. And they show from 2016 to 2020, more than 71,000 people were injured by forward-moving vehicles. Almost 2,000 died, more than 500 in 2020 alone. Senator Blumenthal said he's glad NHTSA has released this much-needed data. Telling the I-Team the data makes it clear that frontovers will continue to senselessly and needlessly take innocent lives without action. I will continue to press for rapid remedies to bring an end to these tragedies. The New developments in a News 4 I-Team investigation into accidents involving blind zones in front of vehicles. Just three months after watching our report, a United States senator introduced legislation to prevent those frontover deaths. Consumer investigative reporter Susan Hogan joins us now with the late-breaking details. Susan? Well, that's right. So Senator Richard Blumenthal today introduced what's being called the Stop Front Overs Act, which would require all new vehicles to come equipped with cameras, sensors, or other technology to improve a driver's visibility in front of their car. In July, a News 4i team demonstration found just how large some blind zones can be on SUVs or trucks, in some cases up to 16 feet, and have led to numerous deaths and injuries mostly among children. Jackie Foshi's four-year-old little boy died after she accidentally ran him over in her large SUV in their Virginia driveway. He opened the gate and I drove very slowly, like all the way up. And then um, he wasn't there. And I thought he was getting the mail and you know your worst nightmare, he was under the car. She says she never saw him dart in front of the vehicle. Jackie shared Hudson's story for the first time with the News 4i team, hoping it would bring about change. And today, a major step. Blumenthal, who sits on the Committee on Commerce, Science and Transportation and watched our report, says this legislation would save countless lives. The legislation would require the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration to issue a new federal motor vehicle safety standard that requires vehicles to be equipped with technology that enables drivers to detect and respond to objects in front of their vehicles, especially children. The legislation also would require NHTSA to formally define the term front over to allow for more accurate data collection. After our I-Team report, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration released updated data showing almost half, 46 percent of non-occupants who died between 2016 and 2020 in non-traffic incidents were killed after being struck by vehicles moving forward. 
Now, if the bill is passed, NHTSA will have to issue a final safety standard within two years. The agency told us it looks forward to reviewing the draft legislation.